All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another first year seminar. I'm going to give it just one moment to make sure everybody makes it into the meeting room from the waiting room. So if you'll bear with me, we'll get started in just one second. All right, my friends. Uh, well, as I said, welcome to the first year seminar this week. Um, this week, we're continuing our discussion about campus resources, but we're kind of starting to delve a little bit more deeply into the topic because, we, yes, we are going to finish introducing your campus resources to you this week. But at the same time, the overarching theme of the seminar this week more so is how to make your voice count, essentially, at Illinois Tech. So where do you need to go and what do you need to do, essentially, whenever you are advocating for any kind of personal change um, or help with personal issues on campus, or if you're advocating for larger changes to the institution as a whole, what are the proper channels to follow when you're wanting to do so? So essentially the whole point of today's seminar is to really put a lot of different tools in your toolbox so that you are very well aware of our campus resources and the proper channels of communication anytime that you have an issue um, or a solution that you're seeking. So for those of you who may be popping in for the first time this week, if you don't know me yet, my name is Marky Rhodes. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Undergraduate Admission, and I'm also your primary instructor for the First Year Experience Program. If you ever have any questions or need anything at all, of course, you are always welcome to reach out to your first year mentor directly, but you are also welcome to reach out to me. My email address is mrhodes1 at iit.edu, and I am always more than happy to help you out. So please don't be shy. If you need anything at all, please let me know. So today's objectives, what is it that we're trying to accomplish today? Uh, the first thing that I wanna do is finish our objective of familiarizing you as students with our crucial campus resources. And last week I promised you a campus resources cheat sheet. I'm gonna be sharing that with you today and then your mentors will be sharing a, a, um, an electronic version of that with you in your small group discussions this week. So definitely don't miss that. This is a really valuable resource that you're going to want to make sure that you have access to. The next goal that we're gonna work on today though is to really empower you to advocate for both personal and institutional change by following the proper channels of communication at Illinois Tech. So basically if you need to get something done, today's seminar should really help you figure out what the proper protocol is that you can follow to do so to ensure that you get the answers and the solutions that you need. So for today's agenda, the first thing that we're going to do is introduce the campus resources cheat sheet. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is start talking about your voice counts, how to advocate for personal inst and institutional change. And then if it's not enough to hear it from me, we're then going to have some words of wisdom from fellow students, how to get things done for yourself um, and for the university as a whole here at Illinois Tech. So you'll get to hear a little bit of firsthand advice. Um, and then of course, we'll finish up with a look toward the next week and the weeks after with some of our upcoming events and uh, to-do items for you. So let's start with the Campus Resources Cheat Sheet. All right, so what I want to do is to show you um, with the Campus Resources Cheat Sheet essentially kind of how the document is going to be laid out. So first of all, the purpose of this cheat sheet that I'm about to show you is really just to encourage you as students to maximize the use of all of your resources at Illinois Tech by basically making sure that I have all of the most important kind of heavy hitting resources that you'll probably find yourself utilizing the most often in one document in one place so that I'm kind of removing that barrier of it being overwhelming to figure out where to go. Um, the document is going to be separated into two parts. Um, the first part is going to be just your campus resources essentially. It'll be a table showing all of the offices and or individuals um, that you can go to, the types of services and supports that they provide, their contact information and location on campus, and then a live link to their website. So that's why I'm having your mentor share this with you electronically so that you can actually access the live links anytime that you need something. The second part of the document is shifting into that your voice counts theme. And this is essentially really the people or the offices that you would need to go to to either solve personal issues that affect you as a student 
or to advocate for larger changes to the campus, essentially. Um, so once again, it's going to be set up in a table format. And then once again, there will be a description of the services and supports that those people provide. Um, I'll even indicate for you whether the resource is most appropriate for an individual issue or an institutional issue. Um, and then I will also list the contact information and have a live link to the website. So what I want to do right now, excuse me, have to get my toolbar out of the way so that I can actually click on this for you, is I'm going to go ahead and actually open up the document and show you how it's set up. So this is your campus resource cheat sheet. This is what your mentors are going to be sharing with you in your small group discussion this week. So like I said, make sure you don't miss this. Um, so as I said, here's the first part. And you can see that basically what I did is I added all of the most important resources that first year students are typically going to be taking advantage of. So you can see the list of resources here in this column. And then in the next one, we've got all the services and support. So if you're ever confused about where do I go to order a transcript, where do I go to request a grade change, um, that can be confusing. There are a lot of different places to go for those things. So it's all very clearly laid out here in in the second column to take the guesswork out of it for you. In addition, I've got the contact information and the location for all of these offices, including the general email addresses and phone numbers. And then, as I said before, a live link to each website. So that is the campus resources component of the document. And definitely make sure that you take some time to read through this. I think that you're going to find that there's really a lot to take advantage of on campus that's going to be really beneficial to you as a first year student. Um, if you're interested in undergraduate research, I even tried to collect kind of all of the different avenues um, for where you can go to seek those kinds of opportunities in one place. Um, because there are different, definitely various different ways that you can pursue those opportunities. So um, I have all of the different ways that you can get involved in research listed here. And then once again, I have live links to the websites um, for ways to uh, look into that. In addition, I want to scroll down and show you this Your Voice Counts page. So essentially, the whole purpose, like I said, of the Your Voice Counts page is really to help you figure out, okay, if I have a personal problem that I need someone to help me with, who do I go to? And then on the flip side, if I want to advocate for a larger change to the university as a whole, for example, maybe you would like to see some positive changes made in the residence halls or to the way that meal plans are done or something that really affects the larger student body as a whole, how can you advocate for those kinds of changes? So that's what I have here in Your Voice Counts. Um, so one thing that I really want to draw everybody's attention to, because I know that a lot of students are not even aware that this is a position at Illinois Tech, um, is that every university or most universities um, are going to have someone referred to as an ombuds person. Um, and Melissa Lopez is actually our ombuds person here at Illinois Tech. But basically what an ombuds person does is they're an impartial mediator, basically between students and the rest of the university at all levels. And essentially, if you are basically trying to solve an issue and you've already gone directly to the source and you've already exhausted all of those options and you still can't find a solution, that is really the purpose of the ombuds person is to help you to find that solution. So I would definitely definitely check out these columns looking at the services and supports that Melissa Lopez can provide, um, the kinds of issues that she can help with. There's quite a lot of um, explanation with that. And then her contact information and the live website describing what an ombuds person does in more detail is also listed here. So that's a really important resource that I just want to point out and make all of you are aware of. Um, other things that I have listed here, um, you know, people that you can go to for help with personal issues like your RA, your academic advisor, your first year mentor. And then if you're trying to advocate for larger changes on campus, as I mentioned before, for example, maybe for changes to the residence halls um, or maybe changes to meal plans or whatever it is, um, there are also some avenues that you can follow for that. So working directly with SGA, our Student Government Association, is a really good place to voice those kinds of concerns. We also have a President Student Advisory Council, which is basically a council of students um, that basically directly works with the administration 
in order to improve the culture and the way that we operate on campus. So getting in, in, in touch with PSAC um, is also a great way to advocate for changes on campus. Um, the Residence Hall Association is another great place to go specifically related to meal plans and residence halls, living conditions, things like that. Um, and then I also have the Illinois Tech Administration listed here. Um, so I have the president, I have the provost, I have their assistants listed as well, um, because sometimes it's easier to contact their assistant uh, than them with their busy schedules. Um, and sometimes that's the best, best way to get things done. So I have all of those people listed right here for you. So as I said, your mentors are going to be sharing this with you um, in your small group discussion this week as a, an electronic document so that you have access to all of these live website links. So don't miss it. This is definitely something that you want to have in your hands. All right, popping on to my presentation. So the next thing that I want to do is chat a little bit more about appropriate methods for ensuring that your voice counts on campus and making sure that your voice is really heard whenever it needs to be. So whether you're trying to advocate for personal uh, solutions or for institutional solutions, these are some protocols and kind of proper channels of communication that you want to keep in mind whenever you're trying to do so. So the first thing that you always want to ask yourself anytime that you have a an issue that you are seeking a solution to is essentially do I need assistance with a personal issue or am I trying to advocate for a larger change to the institution because the answer to that question is largely going to direct really where it is most appropriate for you to go with that information. If you are having a personal issue that really only impacts you as a student. You always want to start by having a conversation directly with the source. So let's say that you are having some struggles with a faculty member um, or a staff member. You always want to start by having a direct conversation with that individual. Let's say that that happens and you still don't find a, a, a solution. Um, well, the next thing that you want to do is escalate it to the appropriate office, organization, and or staff member. So as I mentioned before, our campus ombudsperson, Melissa Lopez, um, is often a great person to escalate to in the event that you cannot find a solution after already going directly to the source. Um, sometimes it might be a department chair. Um, and if you're ever not sure who you should really be escalating to, um, ask your first year mentor, ask your resident, uh, your RA. Um, we are all here to help you figure that out if you aren't sure. So like I said, if you're not sure where to escalate, just ask. We're happy to help. Um, something to keep in mind, though, is that contacting the administration, so the president, the provost, any of those people that I have listed at the bottom of the spreadsheet that I just shared with you, that should typically be your last resort after exhausting all of your other options. So just keep that in mind. Um, when it comes to larger institutional changes, something that you want to keep in mind is there are definitely some very strong governing bodies on campus that are a great place to go to advocate for these kinds of changes. So as I mentioned before, the Student Government Association, great organization to work with if you are trying to advocate for any kind of larger changes to the campus. Same thing with the President Student Advisory Council or PSAC. Um, same thing with the Residence Hall Association. Now, if you are just looking for an opportunity to just kind of voice your general opinions about the university in hopes that they will be taken into consideration as we move forward in the future, do keep in mind that each year the university typically administers what's called a student speak survey. Um, and that is really a place for you to voice all of your opinions safely about the university's culture, the way that we operate, the quality of the instruction, all of those kinds of things. So definitely whenever you see that student speak survey, make sure that you take it and that you take the time to really think about your answers because I can tell you that the faculty, the staff, the administration, we absolutely take a look at those results and that is part of what we do with our strategic planning for the future. So those are just some outlets to be aware of. Now with that being said, um, I definitely think that uh, it's, it's certainly valuable to hear from other people who have been in your shoes um, and who have actually dealt with some of these issues. So let's take some time to get some words of wisdom from your fellow students and hear about how to get things done for yourself and for the larger university community. 
So um, if my panelists could go ahead and unmute yourselves. Uh, today with, with us, we have Henry White, um, we have Jack Pio, and then we have Katia Bertold. Um, I know that Lucy uh, Kegley was also supposed to be with us, um, but she got caught downtown uh, in one of her classes, so she won't be able to join us today. So um, Henry, Jack, and Katia, can you just let me know you're here, please? Right here. Awesome. Is it too loud for you, Shane? Um, I can hear you, Katia, just fine. There is a little bit of noise in the background. Um, so, uh, Henry, if you will, I know that you were on last week, but if you could just take a second to introduce yourself again so everybody knows who you are. Yeah, uh, my name's Henry. I am a fourth year student here at IIT, uh, getting my Bachelor's of Science in Aerospace Engineering, and I recently started uh, a, a co-terminal degree for public administration. Fantastic. Thank you. Jack, would you mind reintroducing yourself as well? Yeah, I'm Jack Pio. I'm a fourth year as well. I'm a computer engineering student. Um, I'm not doing a master's program, so I will be graduating in May. Super excited. Ah, oh, congrats. Although none of you are allowed to talk about graduating because it makes me really sad, the thought of you leaving. <laughs> um, and then Katia, would you like to introduce yourself again? Yeah, I'm Katia. I'm a fourth year mechanical and aerospace engineering co-term student, and I'm also graduating in May. All right, thank you so much. So Henry, Jack, and Katia, I'm gonna kind of divide this into three questions. Um, so if you can kind of help me out with each one of these. The first thing that I really wanna focus on is solving personal issues on campus. So, you know, anytime that you essentially just have an issue, um, you know, with, for example, a, a grade in a class or needing a transcript or just anything that you need solved at a personal level, um, what advice do you have to fellow students basically to just make sure that you get any personal issues solved as quickly as possible and feel free to jump in at any time. Yeah, I guess I'll go first. Um, it's, it's a little one to think about a bit, but um, I think as she was mentioning before, I think the biggest thing is to take it up with the person that you might have the issue with um, and to really hear out all the sides um, of what you might be struggling with. Of course, it might be an internal struggle as well. Um, and I think Something that college students don't do enough is reflection um, and evaluation of their own actions and things that they're doing. So um, you might not be a journaler, you might not be someone that reflects well, I'm definitely not, but um, having time, especially when you're in that maybe aggressive state or you're really mad at something to take a chill pill and take a break is something that I recommend. Awesome, thank you so much, Jack. Uh, Katya or Henry, do either one of you have anything to offer for that question? I think oftentimes the people around you are the best place to go. Sometimes your friends have gone through the same personal issue, whether they couldn't get their ID card, they had a conflict with their professor. But I would definitely recommend your FYE mentors to start. And even if they don't know, they'll know who to reach out to connect you. Absolutely. Going to that first year mentor is huge. That's your best resource whenever you just don't know where to go or quite how to handle that issue. Um, and if your mentor doesn't know, then they typically get a hold of me to ask me. So we will definitely help you out. Um, Henry, any thoughts on that one? Or uh, are you good with the opinions that have been offered? I uh, definitely agree with everything that's been offered. I think specifically when looking at maybe academic personal issues, um, like something that might come up with a professor, um, definitely something that I've um, kind of learned and relearned is that most of the professors here are just super chill about those types of things. Like there's kind of that thought was like, oh, they probably don't want to be approached about this. If they put in the grade this way, there's probably a reason. If there's something coming up, there's a reason. Most of the professors do actually want to hear some of that feedback and get to know their students a little bit better and, you know, provide that context. So like if it's any reassurance, just know that most of the professors are really chill about having those conversations. Uh, so there doesn't need to be kind of that mental barrier going into them. Absolutely. That's such great advice, Henry. And, you know, keeping in mind that um, I know that it can be intimidating to approach a faculty member and have this open and honest conversation about where you are and what your concerns are. But at the end of the day, what you have to remember is kind of what we talked about in the beginning of the seminar with, you know, college is essentially what you make it. This is your education and you have every right to take ownership of it. So anytime that you might be battling with those feelings of guilt or a little bit of hesitation, uh, you know, stepping forward with something, Keep in mind that you absolutely deserve to be here and you need to advocate. For yourself. Um, so thank you so much. Um, was there anything else to add just on that initial question or panelists, are we good to move on to the next one? 
I'm going to take that as good to move on. We're good to move um, on. <laughs> great. Thank you. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is what advice do you have for your fellow students if they either want to plan kind of larger events on campus or they want to start a new organization? Feel free to jump in. Happy, come on. Um, Henry, do you want to talk about the formal process and then I can share my experience with actually starting a new organization? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, last year I was part of Student Government Association. I was on the executive board and one of my job responsibilities is actually to help new student organizations through kind of this approval process uh, to get officially recognized as a new student organization. Uh, so right off the bat, I, I just want to say that like that you can be instigating some of these uh, social changes on campus without being a formalized student organization. I think a great example of that is uh, if you've seen anything on like the IIT Facebook groups about the student health initiative that came together over the summer. It's a group of students who are working together. They haven't, um, they, they don't have that um, title of a student, official student organization. They're not classified as a student organization, but they are still creating change on their campus um, by working together uh, and getting people involved to um, combat some very specific issues. But if you are looking to create something that is a more formal student organization, then the process really does go through the student government with some input from Office of Campus Life. Uh, some of the things that we looked for when we were approving new student organizations is number of members. Uh, you're required to have at least 10 members to start a new organization. And really the best way to go about that is just um, ask your friends, ask online, put out a Google form to say, hey, would anyone be interested in this? And if you can show 10 interested members, you've already cleared that first hurdle. Uh, the next couple of things we look for is, does this organization, will it serve a unique purpose on this campus? Is it doing something that no one else is really doing or is it doing something in a different way? Um, we just don't wanna have like student organizations that kind of cannibalize each other if they're doing very similar things and competing for the same membership. Um, but so looking for a unique purpose. And then it's also really helpful to see that there's some plan for organizations to continue beyond their initial founding members. Um, so showing some intentionality in planning, maybe getting um, some faculty members to help support the organization, bringing on like a faculty advisor to the organization is always advisable. Uh, and just having some intent to ensure that even when the founding members graduate this organization, will continue on. And some of the results we've seen have been really impressive. I think in, in general, the most student organizations that try to um, get approved do get approved. I think last year we had about a 90% approval rate of new student organizations and student orgs that weren't approved on that first round uh, were given feedback and asked to reapply. Uh, so there was that definitely that there, there is that notion that we do want student orgs to um, be formed. Um, you can start doing some of these things as an organ. You probably should be doing some of the activities you plan to do with your organization right off the bat, even before you're recognized to show that you can carry some of these things out. But what being recognized as a student organization does is it um, allows you to uh, officially represent the university. If you were to go to conferences or things, official student orgs can go to conferences as an official like delegate of the university. Uh, it can allow you to have access to the booking system for booking campus rooms for meetings and events. And it gives you access to the student activity fund. So if you're officially recognized as a student org, uh, you have a new source of funding that you can apply to to run these events and um, buy capital items and um, host larger scale uh, changes. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to pass it over to Kachi and Jack because they actually created a fantastic student organization two years ago now that's had some huge changes on campus. Absolutely, yeah. share. Yeah, so I guess before I dive into that, the first thing I want to say is we do have 150 or so student orgs. So if you ever are interested in something, the first step is to see if you already have it. Now, if we don't, then that's the best time for you to kind of think about whether this is something that you care enough about that you'd want to make your own or whether you can find that through another outlet. For me, a couple years ago, I had this big passion kind of come out of me that I wanted to help other people focus on what they're passionate about outside of the classroom. And at the time, there wasn't any one entity that really drove the same vision that I had. And so I decided to create one. Jack was definitely one of the original members and him and I are kind of the advisors of this new organization. But it really showed me that if there isn't something that you want here, you can make it. And we have the resources to make that happen. So the good thing about, I guess, being at a small school is that resources are at your fingertips. And that has really helped us grow something from scratch into something that's quite large now and has gained a lot of momentum. 
Yeah, I've been on there as well, kind of going off of what they both said. I was able to kind of jump on the both of the things, so SHI, the, the student health initiative this summer, the thing that wasn't technically an organization, but still is creating change on campus, um, specifically around COVID related um, things. Um, and um, the administration and students, um, the conversation there and also with funding. And so um, that was really neat to just get be a part of. And all, the, all that happened was one person put a post on Facebook and then about 25 people joined. And then we had meetings with administration galore. And it was, it's just really neat because you just, have passion and then you know there's other people that are have a similar passion and then you can move mountains really and do things that you didn't think were possible um, and i think um also continuing and answering the question about planning events as well um i think that also it also starts with the good organ good organization um and planning and whatnot of finding the right people as well and the, the in the, those organizations that you start and of course um it's easier to plan events when you're within an organization, but of course you can plan events like through other means as well. So it's really finding the right people, um, finding the time and the planning um, to really execute those events well. Um, but if you're passionate enough about it, um, you'll figure out a way to do it. That is such fantastic advice. Thank you so much to all three of you for that. Um, the last thing that I want to focus on, and we really only have just a couple minutes to talk about this, but I would like to spotlight how basically students can advocate for larger institutional changes on campus. Um, so Katya and Henry, I know that you specifically have some experience with SGA. Um, and then Jack, I know that you have some experience with the Residence Hall Association. Can you very briefly speak to that? Um, yeah, I think when it comes to larger institutional change, um, kind of the, the theme that's been presented between this, uh, this whole seminar and last week's seminar too, is that the resources are there. There are the means um, to accomplish these changes with existing organizations, whether that be a student-led organization um, like SGA, Residence Hall Association, uh, PSAC, or whether that be some of the existing campus departments. I think really the key to achieving these larger changes is persistence. Um, I, in general, I, the administration is listening. Um, it is, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of crossfire um, and it is sometimes um, hard, easy. It's easy for some of those messages to get lost in all that noise, but the president and provost ho um, work with SGA um, to once a semester have a forum where they can hear these concerns directly. SGA um, and PSAC and RHA and all those organizations are in constant communication. So in order to get some of these uh, changes in place, it really just takes repeated um, efforts um, to, to get the ball rolling, to make sure that that initial complaint doesn't get lost in all the noise and that um, you, know, you can kind of build a coalition with all the other students and administrators that want to see the same change happen. But I think it's, it's, you know, sometimes repetitiveness is the way to go, but sometimes creativity is also a, a way to go because sometimes you feel like as a student, your voice isn't being heard and it's not that it's not being heard, but there are so many things trying to be heard at the same time. Finding a creative way to get it to be heard is the best way to get actual change on campus. Um, a really small anecdote, Marky, if I may. Jack and I were involved with a multi-org initiative this past summer called Change at Illinois Tech. And the reason we did it was because we realized that so many students just felt stuck. They didn't feel like they had the power. They didn't feel like people were listening. And I think people in higher ed know if you want something done really quickly, you should do it yourself. So what we did was we got the provost and the president involved, and we got students to propose their own entire implementation plan of different changes affecting diversity and inclusion, empowering underprivileged students, all those types of things. And because we had planned it out, a student initiative, we had picked a deliberate outcome of funding, procedure, meetings, we had everything set up for the administration to agree to, we ended up having a really solid outcome because we made it as easy as possible for the administration to support it. And at the end of the incubator program, the president proposals are actually funding the top three ideas that are ready to be implemented. So this is the first time that these students have a PowerPoint, they have this idea that they want to implement, and they're going to be given funding and meetings per semester and actually are going to be able to implement it. 
So doing it that way, we found was a little different and unorthodox than going through SJ like normal or going through PSAC like normal, but it worked. And so I think creativity is also another way to think about it. Yeah, I have one final thing to say just because we're kind of running out of time here, but um, just simply um, be bold and to the point. I think if you put your, uh, yourself in the administration's shoes, um, they're getting bombarded by lots of different information, lots of questions, probably very similar questions and similar things every single day. Um, so if you were in that position, what would you do? How would you um, prioritize? What would you want to talk to? How would you want to do that? And so if you're able to do that, um, then you can think of ways in which you're actually able to get into their um, minds and actually get things done. Awesome advice. Thank you so much to our panelists for joining us, especially for the last two weeks. It is very, very much appreciated. Um, and if you have any questions, friends, um, Henry, Jack, and Katia are all first-year mentors and are, I'm sure, happy to chat a little bit more. Um, so always feel free to reach out uh, to any of the mentors to further discuss these things. All right, so friends, that brings us to our upcoming events, reflection opportunities, and next steps. Just, just a couple more minutes of your time here. Um, so in terms of upcoming events, remember your weekly small discussion group this week is going to be when you get this campus resources cheat sheet. There are also going to be some really cool community building things going on this week um, and next week in your small discussion group. So definitely get involved. I think you're going to find these next couple ones a lot of fun to be part of. Um, that being said, our next first year seminar is going to be Tuesday. September 15th from 12.50 to 1.20. And we're going to be transitioning now from this campus resources, your voice counts discussion into talking about the truth behind the college transition and why mindset matters when you're navigating new challenges. So if you are starting to get to the point where you are ready to start talking about some of the struggles and challenges of being a brand new first year student and how to kind of navigate those challenges, this is going to be that seminar. So definitely stay tuned for next week. Something else that I definitely want to draw your attention to friends is that it is mental health awareness week and the campus has some wonderful programming going on around mental health awareness so I would strongly encourage you to get involved um, there is an entire calendar of events that are virtual happening starting today actually um, so your mentors once again are going to be pushing some of these things out to you in your small group so that you have these schedules um, but you can see that basically every day Tuesday Wednesday um, Thursday and Friday there are several different sessions happening all via zoom so I would definitely check that out if I were you um, I think it's just a fantastic resource um, the next thing is on September 22nd during our first year seminar, uh, Tiara de Guzman, who is one of our uh, career coaches and career services, is actually going to be doing a guest lecture all about the Strengths Quest assessment. Um, and so to get ready for that, we want all of you to take the Strengths Quest. So if you don't know what that is, it's an assessment that is essentially intended to identify your personal strengths. And the whole point of that is to learn how to operate from a strengths based mindset in both your academic life and in planning for your professional life. So I think that's a really important concept to understand as a first year student. Um, so what I'm gonna be asking you to do is to take the Strengths Quest assessment sometime this week. Please make sure that you take it by next week on Tuesday, which is September 15th. At that point, Tiara is going to go in and she's going to analyze all of the first year class data. And then she's gonna be pointing out some of the common trends and patterns whenever she joins us on September 20th. So like I said, take that Strengths Quest assessment by next Tuesday, which is September 15th, to give her plenty of time to analyze that data before she joins us on the 22nd. Um, how to access the Strengths Quest. Um, your mentors, once again, are going to be providing this information to you in an email. But just so you are aware, you're going to go to iit.gallup.com. You'll want to register for an account with your IIT username and login, and then take the assessment by Tuesday, September 15th. Now, like I said, when Tiara joins us next week, or excuse me, on the 22nd, she's going to be doing kind of a summary and an, and an explanation of how to use it. But if you're interested in learning more and really focusing Focusing on your specific results, you are welcome to sign up for a 30 minute appointment with her where she can really delve into your individual results. Um, so her email address is right there, tdeguzman at iit.edu. And you can email her with any questions or concerns. So please, please, please take the Strengths Quest by next Tuesday on the 15th so we can get rolling with that. 
If you would like to do your reflection journal this week, um, with it being Mental Health Awareness Week, I went with that theme for the reflection journal prompt. So here it is. Why do you think there is such a stigma around struggling with mental health? Do you know anyone who openly seeks help or discusses their own mental health? And how does that impact you? How does it make you feel when people do that around you um, or don't do that around you? Do you ever struggle with your own mental health and how does that make you feel personally? And then would you be willing to reach out for help if you needed it? Why or why not? So if that is something that you think would be valuable to reflect on, please complete your reflection journal, submit it to your mentor, and they can have a conversation with you around those kinds of resources. And as I said, next week's seminar on the 15th is going to be talking about the truth behind the college transition, how expectations can sometimes differ from reality, common challenges that new students face, and how to thrive in those difficult situations. So definitely join us for that. It's an important and real conversation. And my friends, once again, as always, if you have any questions, concerns, need anything at all, my name is Marky Rhodes. Please feel free to contact me. My email address is mrhodes1 at iit.edu. I am here to help, so don't be shy. Your first year mentors are also a fantastic resource if you need anything. And that is it, my friends. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. And don't forget to check out some of the mental health awareness activities uh, this week. And that's all we've got. So enjoy the rest of your week. Um, and we will see you next Tuesday.